All right, good morning, everybody, and good to be on with you on this fine, fine day. Hope you're doing well on this Wednesday, uh, September the 4th. Uh, trust that you've had a good start to September. We are a couple minutes late. Hopefully, uh, we didn't have a lot of people check in and check out because we weren't on right on time here. Sorry, had a couple things had to uh, had to take care of really quick, uh, and it kind of ran into our start, but we're all set and ready. We'll give everybody a chance to get back on. Be sure and comment all that good stuff there uh, and share it so that everybody knows that we are ready to go, even though we are a couple minutes late, and I apologize for that. Romans chapter number eight is where we're at. Romans chapter eight is where we're at. I want to encourage you, uh, get into church tonight. Be in church this evening, no matter where you're watching from, no matter what part of the world you're watching from, from be sure and get into the Lord's house on, uh, for the midweek service and enjoy your Bible study, uh, prayer time, all of that will be a blessing, I am sure, to you, okay? All right, Romans chapter number eight, let's look and see what God has for us today. I want to spend some time focusing really on verse number one. Uh, we'll see uh, if we are able to work our way down into chapter number eight a little bit, a little bit this morning. We'll see how it plays out. But verse number one, chapter eight and verse number one. The Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation. Now, if the if the verse were to stop there, um, there'd be no condemnation. Uh, there'd be no judgment for our sin and all that. But the verse continues, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, uh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Okay, what, what do we mean that there's now no condemnation? Uh, because Jesus has taken our punishment upon himself, uh, there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Now, uh, let's, let's say, uh, kind of uh, say this here. Uh, there are going to be two, uh, two judgments. Okay, one for the saved, one for the unsaved. Uh, and so I, I think as as we finish out verse number one, where it says there's now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, hey, they're not going to be condemned to hell. That's uh, They will be in heaven for all of eternity, those that are in Christ Jesus, and we praise the Lord for that. Uh, but there are two judgments that I want us to, to kind of just review just for a moment here uh, this morning. And, and we'll tackle them one at a time. The first judgment I want us to consider for a moment is found in the book of Revelation uh, towards the end. It is the great white throne judgment. At that judgment, uh, it, all of the unsaved will appear before God at the great white throne judgment. And all of those that are at this judgment are condemned. The reason they're at that judgment is because they do not know Christ Jesus, and so therefore they are condemned already. They are judged according to their works, and their works come short of the glory of God. And how sad that is, and, and uh, that for those that will be there, is that uh, there is now no hope, there is no second chance there is no other opportunity. They're at that judgment. And Jesus will say, depart from me, I never knew you. And they'll be cast into the lake of fire. Uh, and, and I don't say that with joy. I do not say that with glee. Uh, I say that with the sad reality that that is the judgment. Uh, and, uh, and, and what a horrible thing that is. And, and that ought to encourage us as believers to be uh, that witness for Jesus Christ, not that we save people, but that people might be saved by Jesus Christ through our witness of who Jesus is. And so that's the, the first judgment I want us to kind of mention this morning, that great white throne judgment. Those that are at that judgment are condemned. Uh, but the Bible says there is now therefore, there is ne therefore now no condemnation to them uh, which are in Christ Jesus. Now, there is this second judgment, just want to reference it. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. And it's uh, those that will be at this judgment 
are the Christians. At this judgment, they're not, the Christian is not judged for their works for salvation uh, because they have trusted in the finished work of Christ for salvation. They have died in Christ Jesus. Uh, they may have been raptured and so on, uh, but they're in Christ Jesus, and so they were what we call saved. Okay, So uh, this judgment is not a judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, is not a judgment to uh, eternal damnation, but rather it's a judgment of what was done for Christ. What did the believer do with their life? What did they do for Christ? Uh, and that's the judgment uh, that all Christians will be at. Uh, and that ought to encourage us to know that, man, we're going to stand for the Lord and we're going to give an account for how we used our life for Christ. Uh, and uh, our works for Christ, our service for Christ is going to be tried by fire. Uh, and uh, what's going to remain? Will it be wood, hair, stubble? Uh, and so those are some things that we need to consider. As a Christian, those of us in Christ, we do not walk after the flesh. We walk after the spirit. So we are not condemned. We are not going to be uh, at that great white throne judgment. We're not condemned but we will be judged for our service for Christ and how we use the opportunities, the time, our talents, and so on for Christ. Uh, and my prayer for my life and for your life is to not be like that church that we read about in Revelation that had left their first love. Let's, let, let's go to it for just a moment here. In Revelation chapter number two, we find in Revelation chapter number two, we, we see this uh, church at Ephesus. We'll kind of jump right in the middle of it. That's verse number two, chapter two, verse number two, where it says, I know that works. And so this this church was was doing for the Lord. It says, I know that works, that labor, that patience, which thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them and has found them liars and has borne and has patience for my sake, name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. So this is a people that are serving, they're involved in church, man, they're uh, they're they're doing the work, they're faithful. But you look at verse number four where Jesus says, Nevertheless, I have someone against thee because thou hast left thy first love. This church at Ephesus was going through the motions of church. They're going through the motions of service. They had done some good things and were doing some good things, but they had left their first love. The, the, the scary thing for me is that I just go through the motions. Uh, and, and I don't want that to be the descriptor of my life, my service for Christ, that I just go through the motions. Well, we've always done this. I've always gone to church, so I'm going to continue. And, and those are good habits, yes. But man, it's our heart that the Lord wants. Uh, and do we have a heart for service, a heart for the Lord, a heart for others? Uh, and uh, man, we're walking after the Spirit, not after the flesh. And our works, our service for Christ is going to be judged, and, and, and it's not going to condemn us to hell, okay? But will it last, or will it burn up by the, the, the judgment of fire? Uh, or will it be gold, precious stones, and the like? And so that's something to consider as we, as we maintain our walk with Christ. Why, the question we ought to ask, why are we doing what we're doing? Or have we left our first love? You know, we can still come to church, be faithful to church, and leave our first love. Listen, there are many people that are faithful to religious institutions around the world. And they are, they're not even serving the Lord, but man, they're more faithful than a believer is. And that's a sad thing. So my question as we consider walking not after the flesh, but after the spirit, and living in the reality as a believer that, hey, we are not condemned, but the reality is, 
how is our heart service for the Lord? A Christianity not ought not to be a because I have to, because the pastor told me to, or maybe you're a young person watching this, because mom and dad told me to. No, it ought to be come from a heart that has a desire to live for the Lord and serve the Lord. Okay, we're going to end with that and uh, trust that uh, you'll have a great day today. And uh, let's take these thoughts from the Word of God to heart. Uh, and let's live uh, differently today because of what Christ has done for us. Once again, sorry, we're a couple minutes late, so hopefully that didn't throw too many people off their schedule. Had a little thing I had to get done here this morning. Uh, Cliff, and, uh, Cliff and Karen, man, Miss Cliff so much. Karen, good morning to you, uh, and glad that you're on. Tom, good morning to you as well. Uh, Ingrid, good to have you on this morning. Love you and have a great day. Brian and Cindy, good morning to you guys. Hope that you guys have an awesome day. Charlie and Marsha, good to have you guys on. Have a great day. David and Claudia, good morning to you as well. Becky, good morning to you. Have an awesome day. Dennis and Jerry Lynn, good to have you guys on. Thank you for the encouragement in regards to our devotions. Uh, and... Luke, you have a great rest of the week as well. Uh, all right, Lord bless you all. Have a great day, uh, and Lord willing, we'll see we'll see many of you in church tonight. Have a great day, everybody.